الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. My dear brother and sister in Islam, الحمد لله. All praise to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. إن شاء الله tonight is gonna be our third class of Hajj after the first lecture. Uh, was about the benefit of Hajj and we have talked about <coughs> so the pillars of Hajj and last week we have talked about the Umrah which is as uh, as we know together that most of uh, people from Australia they are going to do uh, Tamattu' Hajj kind of Hajj Tamattu' so they have to do the Umrah first and then finish their Umrah which is they have to release themselves from the Umrah uh, and then uh, wait until uh, Hajj time comes uh, and Hajj comes uh, will be on the 8th of the Hijjah so basically uh, all of us or whoever is going uh, to perform Hajj uh, they have to make preparation at the day 8th of the Hijjah the day 8th of the Hijjah uh, <coughs> most of them will be some of them will be still in Mecca and some of them will be in Aziziyah, but Aziziyah is also part of Makkah, part of Makkah region. So what they have to do is they have to uh, uh, perform the ihram, like they have to wear the the ihram garment from wherever they are. Different with the Umrah, people have to do the Umrah uh, from the Miqat. When they go from outside Makkah, and they they are uh, uh, going uh, inside Makkah, so they have to pass the uh, some points that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the hadith for Medina, the Hulayfa, for for Yemen people, Yalamlam, from and the others. But the people for, for for those people who stay in Makkah, inside Makkah, when the day eight of the Hijjah, ah, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Hatta ahlu Makkah min Makkah." So when they stay inside Makkah, they only doing the ihram or they say the talbiyah from wherever they are inside the Makkah. So basically, we will wear, yeah, we will put our uh, ihram garment and then we will say la baik Allahumma hajjan. Before, when we when we perform umrah, we say la baik Allahumma umratan. But this one is different. Because we are going to do Hajj, what we say is La Baik Allahumma Hajjan. From Aziziyah or from Makkah, wherever we are in Saint Makkah, <coughs> we are yeah, going to Mina on the day eight of the Hijjah, and it is called Yawm Tarwiyah, day of preparation. Tarwiyah means when we are preparing water for drink. Tarwiyah is make preparation of uh, some waters to for drink. Day of eight, yeah, we are going to Mina. What we have to do in Mina, we are staying one night in Mina. So day eight, night of ninth of Dhul, Dhul Hijjah. So we will stay overnight in Mina, most of us. Because Mabit in Mina, at the day eight of Dhul Hijjah, some scholars said it's only Sunnah of Hajj. It's not even the wajib of some of scholars said it's wajib of Hajj. If we choose the opinion that Mabit or staying overnight yeah, at Mina at the day 8 over uh, night <coughs> 9 of the Hijjah is obligation or, 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 or is, is wajib, so then we have to do it. Anyway, yeah, I will explain. We stay overnight in Mina until the morning day of 9 of the Hijjah. Before the day nine of the Hijjah, at night, what we have to do? Of course, we will be at the Maghrib time and Isha time at Mina. What we have to do? That we are going to do shortening and combining between Maghrib and Isha, yeah, at Maghrib time, or what we know as Jama' Taqdim. Make it early combining at Maghrib time. The reason is some scholars said so we have if we do it early we have long time preparation to do dhikr to uh, perform dua uh, to read the quran <coughs> and then do some ibadah or maybe you want to pray sunnah yeah 
do sadaqah a lot of people yeah, poor people they need to be uh, to to get some some food so you can buy some food so any kind of ibadah that you can perform at that night do it because you are in the sacred land that means whatever we do yeah as a worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be multiplied in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we stay overnight and then until the subuh time yeah we are praying subuh at mina after that we are starting to make preparation to go to arafah at the day of nine of the hijjah and what we have to do in arafah we have to stay in arafah or what we know as a wukuf in arafah wukuf means standing but if you can't stand yeah, standing all the time at, at arafah it's not obligatory so you can sit down you can laying down whatever you want as long you have to make sure that you are inside the burden of arafah and alhamdulillah no days we uh, or saudi government put some yeah b- uh, border or some sign to show us that we are inside the arafah uh, land and we have to make sure about that some of us they make it take it easy yeah and basically or actually they are not inside the arafah they are outside yeah the territory of arafah what's the bad things or what will uh, they will get if that's happen if they stay not inside arafah they are uh, will be counted as the people who is not performing wukuf in arafah and wukuf in arafah pillar of hajj prophet sallallahu alaihi said al hajju arafah hajj is arafah which is wukuf in arafah if you miss wukuf in arafah that means your hajj is broken no. will not be accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever you do that in there it's useless yeah you just spend your time spend your money but you didn't get anything so we have to make sure and we have that that's why we have to be uh, uh, aware we have to yeah uh, choose good travel agent that uh, they know what they do yeah they are they have some ex, uh, experience so they don't make a mistake to guide us to be inside the uh, border of or inside the Arafah land okay we go to Arafah some of us will 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 leave Mina in the morning to go to Arafah some of us will will leave Mina uh, close to the midday or, or close in between 10 to 12 o'clock because we have the rules in there uh, and then we have to be on queue with the bus uh, with the with the uh, uh, transportation yeah transport so we have to some of us will live in the morning some of us are close to midday anyway what we have to do is we have to or or wukuf in arafah stay in arafah basically start after zawal or zuhur time and wukuf in arafah yeah will be from zawal like zuhur time until ghurub shams until sunset so we have to stay in arafah from zuhur until sunset until maghrib we are not allowed to leave Arafah before Maghrib. Some scholars said whoever leave Arafah before Maghrib, yeah, what we are afraid is their Arafah, their wukuf is invalid. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stay until Maghrib in Arafah. <coughs> so what we what we do, what certain of ibadah that we uh, perform in, in Arafah, basically all of ibadah that you can do, do it. You can do read the quran you do a dhikr and there is so many dhikr that you can search on the google or some uh, books kind of dhikr that we can read or recite when we are in arafah yeah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dua read the quran yeah call your family do silatu rahim yeah connect your relation with your family overseas call them and then maybe yeah talk to them yeah but don't forget about one dhikr or one dua that we have to keep saying it once we are inside Arafah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, Khair dua, dua Arafah. The best dua is the dua at the day of Arafah. Wa khairu ma kultu ana wa nabiyyuna min qabli. And the best recitation that me and 
the prophets before me recited the best one is la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir inshallah all of us yeah memorize know about this zikr keep recite it more and more and more and more we read quran we recite uh, we recite zikr yeah we do sunnah prayer some of us will listen to the khutbah because there will be the khutbah arafah in there even the khutbah will be in the arabic but we will have the uh, translation through the, the radio yeah with english urdu malay you know, spanish latin with all the language yeah and also yeah, from every travel agent yeah, they will have the ustad or the sheikh who will perform the the khutbah yeah and the khutbah will be short yeah uh, because we will give a time for everyone to busy with to be busy with with dhikr with dua and recite quran and 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 all all kind of ibadah we will be in arafa until maghrib after maghrib all of us leave <coughs> mina uh, of arafa and then we are going to muzdalifa we will stay in muzdalifa overnight until the morning or subuh time at the day 10 of the hijjah day 10 of the hijjah is the day who yeah or the day that everyone yeah around the world are celebrating what Eid al adha <laughs> but we are yeah, when we are performing uh, hajj we are not celebrating Eid al adha which is we are not going to do uh, salat al eid yeah, because we will be at muz muzdalifa in subuh time from maghrib time yeah we are going to muzdalifa we stay until next day in the morning subuh so we will pass how many prayers in the in Muzdalifah? Three prayers. Maghrib, Isha, and Subuh. We will pray Maghrib and Isha at Muzdalifah delayed com combining. Jama' takhir. Because from Arafah to go to Muzdalifah, it takes time. Some of us might be walking. Some of us riding bus. And also, as I said, riding bus is not as the bus... Uh, already for waiting for you know there is a queue and million persons million people is performing hard so it will be very crowded yeah for some of us who had it before has imagination had imagination about how crowded it will be in Arafah yeah, and uh, Muzdalifah basically when we go to Muzdalifah yeah, we will be in our place and then pray Maghrib and Isha at Isha time and then some of us or some of scholars yeah they recommended us to just take rest because you will face a big day tomorrow if you have spare time to recite quran before you sleep do it that that's even better but if you feel that you are very tired because you spend all the day at arafah worshiping allah subhanahu wa recite quran do dhikr yeah you you spend all your energy to 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 ask Allah subhanahu wa taala, so you need rest in Mustalifah. If you want to read Quran, read Quran. Yeah. Then you sleep subuh time. Yeah. You you pray subuh at Mustalifah. Then you are going to Mina, back to Mina at the day ten of the Hijjah. This day it called Yawmun Nahar, day of slaughtering, because people picking the stone. Okay. Yes, picking the stone. Yeah, you can do it uh, at. Muzdalifa, yeah. Some good travel agent they will provide with the uh, stones, yeah, the small stones, yeah. But I think it's gonna be a really expensive travel agent, yeah, with the, with the high value of surface. Anyway, you pick, yeah, seven stones only for the day of ten of the Hijjah, Yom Nahar, day of slaughtering. You pick seven seven stones that's enough put in your pocket, or you can you have small bag put in your small small bag day 10 yawmun nahar is the big day for hujjaj for hajj because you will do a couple of things in that day and that day yeah you are going to mina you are going to do four things four activity from you nahru yeah 
halku and tawaf. Ron hak ro nun ha fa. If you want to remember it easily, it's only from four letters. Ro nun ha fa. Fa sorry fa. Ro means rom you throwing. You're going to Mina straight away. You're not going to your campsite. You go straight to the Jamara, the place that we are throwing the stones. There are three pillars in there. First one, second one, big one. Wusta asugra, wusta kubra. Small, medium, big. You are not going to throw the small and then the medium. You are going to throw only the big one. The, the large, the big one. That's why you only need seven stones. Yeah. Rom you, that means you are throwing seven times. You go straight to the big one and throwing seven times. When you throw it, yeah, just put yourself not to not to be in rush because so many people in there. It's only one place to be thrown. <laughs> people, all people going there in the same time. So take care of yourself, yeah. And then if you have, uh, if you have. Uh, uh if if you if you think that you are able to throw it then do it if if not it's still correct just wait until you are able to do it you throw seven times make sure the stone yeah touch the pillars like the wall seven times every time you throw it you say bismillah allah akbar bismillah allah akbar <coughs> bismillah allah akbar seven times after that yeah you are going straight to Masjid al-Haram from the place of Jamarat, Romil Jamarat, the place that you throw three pillars. You are going straight into the Masjid al-Haram because Masjid al-Haram will be after the Mina, the Mina from Musdalifah. So this is the 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 uh, Urtan, order. the order: Arafah, Musdalifah, Mina, then Makkah. Masjid Al Haram. From Mina, you go to Masjid Al Haram. What do you what do you what do you what do you do there? If you want to do uh, tawaf, you can do tawaf. If you want to do halk or shaving your hair or uh, or cut your hair, you cut your hair. But some of us they might be doing tawaf first because this tawaf it's also the rukun of. Hajj, pillar of Hajj, Tawaful Ifadah, or Tawaful Hajj, <coughs> the main Tawaf of Hajj. So you will do seven times Tawaf as we explained last week. So I don't, I don't, I think I don't have to re-explain it again to uh, brothers. We will do Tawaf and then Sa'i. After we finish Tawaf and Sa'i, then we shave our hair. After we Tawaf, we finish our Tawaf and Sa'i, and then we shave our hair. How many activity that we have done that day? Yeah. Rom you throwing, okay. tawaf, tawaf, and then halk. One left. Tawaf, sa'i, sa'i, then uh, tawaf and sa'i. It's one, 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 one package. Okay. Tawaf. So rom you, tawaf and sa'i, tawaf and sa'i, halku, shaving your hair. Shaving. One left. What is it? Slow drink. Yeah, okay. Slow. Nahar, <laughs> nahar. But nahar, you're not gonna do yourself. There will be some people will take the uh, will 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 do it for you, yeah. So, as a scholar said, if you only doing three from this four activity, you are uh, eligible to be in tahallul. So only three because nahar basically someone will do it for you. After you finish this three, you 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 you, you shave your hair. That means you are already made tahallul you don't have to wear your ihram garment anymore you can take shower put perfume yeah and then you can wear normal wear after finish that come back to mina again again <laughs> that's still at the day of 10 you come back again to mina to stay overnight to uh night 11 night of 11 night of 12 and night of 13 because you are going to stay in mina for three days day of 11 day of 12 and day of 13. some of us they do early 
depart uh, depart uh, departure, which is they are leaving at the day of twelve. <coughs> yeah, some of us they are departing at the day of thirteen, which is it's better. But if you want, if if you choose, I just want or, or I only want to stay in Mina until day of twelve. Yeah, it's 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 permissible. Yeah, so basically. From day of 10, you come back to Mina, stay overnight in Mina, still praying Maghrib and Isha, yeah? Com short shortening and combining. Make a lot of dhikr, make a lot of dua, recite Quran, do some of ibadah when you stay in your camp yeah, in Mina. And then next day in the morning, Fajr time, you pray subuh in Mina, yeah? you pray subuh in Mina. And then you wait until Zawal. You wait until close to Subuh time. Some scholars, they said it's permissible to throw at the day 11 from the morning. But I choose the opinion that throwing the day 11 or 12 or 13 must be after Zawal. Of course, this be different opinion. But this is the opinion that I uh, keep. <clears throat> so you wait until Zawal or Zuhur time, you pray Zuhur and Asr, for example, in the in your camp, and then you go from your camp side to that three pillars. Yeah. Small, medium, and large. Sugro, Kub uh, Wusto, and Kubro. But the day you bring 21 stones. Because each of pillars you will throw seven stones. Previous day I, uh, we throw only seven. Yes, the day 10, only 7, the last one. <laughs> yeah. But this day, day 11, first, second, and third, all you have to throw, throw it. Okay. You throw the first pillar. Bismillah, Allah Akbar, throw. Bismillah, Allah Akbar, throw. Until seven times. Once you finish from the first one, you are. it is recommended, it is sunnah, that you are going aside, Yeah. go to the corner before you go to the second one, facing the qibla, and then read whatever you want to read. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reset the ticket. That time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not deny all the question, all the what what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you finish from your hajjah, from your what you need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you go to the second pillar. You throw it seven times same as you throw the first one. first one. After you finish the second one, before you go to the third one, you go aside as well. Go to some corner in there as facing Qibla again you will see the Qibla very clearly with the uh, tower of uh, clock yeah Zam Zam tower very clear as you see let's say the uh, city of Perth from the South Perth in front of you oh this is city of Perth when you in Mina you will see the tower of clock really big very big that means Kaaba in that way so you facing that way ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once you finish Go to the third one, throw seven times. After you finish the third one, there is no dua after that. Just go straight away, follow the the flow, yeah, and then you go come back to your yeah. campsite. Come back to your campsite. Maybe it's close to Maghrib time, yeah, because it take hours. Some, especially Australia. I've been doing Hajj with Australian uh, travel for five six times. And then the, the, the camp of uh, Australian people is a little bit far. We are in the same position with Europe and Turkish people. So sometimes you have to walk around 45 minutes to one hour just to get from your camp to Thanks. the Jamrock, to throw the Jamrock. One hour walking, one hour back, so two hours. And then your activity, yeah, <coughs> some of us, they wait each other with oh where some people there's so many drama will be happen yeah so many drama but inshallah allah will save us protect us from every uh kind of drama huh kind of drama? yeah some people they left behind and then we have to wait because the guide yeah they don't want to leave if if we if we keep moving and then they disappear yeah. oh, it's gonna be really hard especially with the elder yeah, yeah some of us yeah some elder will come with us with the wheelchair so, so many drama, but enjoy it, yeah, because you are together to worshiping Allah subhanahu yeah, wa ta'ala. Yeah, yeah. I've been, yeah, through uh, that kind of thing so many times, yeah. Some people left and then uh, maybe they are, they feel thirsty. 
stop in the shop buy some coca cola or maybe some some drink yeah and then, where is fulan where is mr abdullah oh he's left behind oh then we wait and actually he's already in front of us waiting us in the front so so many drama anyway once we finish from the third throwing we come back to our camp close to maghrib time let's say we pray maghrib and isha also shortening and combining some of travel agent they will put every night lecture yeah so the study chef the the guide uh tour guide will 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 uh do the lecture yeah about the benefit of hajj about about, 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 about anything then you sleep basically when you stay in camp it's not barbecue party or what we used to do in australia you your camp your camping in mina is to worshiping allah subhanahu yeah. ta'ala yeah just not for fill, yeah, fill yeah. your time with dhikr with with uh reciting quran and etc <coughs> next day day 12 yeah day 12 yeah uh same activity you pray subuh in your camp uh and then in your tent and then you wait until zawal then you go to do to throw the the stone again same 27 stone Perfect. how we get yeah, how how we get the stone inshallah it's everywhere in front of mecca it's a rock stone a rock city rock everywhere stone everywhere so it's easy you you pick from this pick from in front of your tent it's a lot everywhere pick 21 do the same things throw the first one and then dua second one throw the second one and then dua and then throw the the third one and then you come back to your camp for those people who is finishing at day yeah uh 12 they after they throw the, the 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 third one they have to leave mina before sunset if they stuck and they stay in mina until sunset they have no choice they have to complete the day 13. so they have to be quick leave mina before sunset they leave mina and then go to mecca so second day second day throwing is not wajib I mean, uh... it's wajib some if some some, some yes uh, if someone <laughs> unable to do it because he's sick okay yeah someone is able to replace let's say you bring your mother and your mother is sick prefer to stay in campsite uh -huh. then you do for her you bring 21 plus 21 42 you throw for yourself and, and then you make intention for to throw your mother yeah it's permissible okay. yeah. or you can tell the star the third guy <laughs> Uh, can you throw for my mom if you yeah. feel uh, heavy to bring 21 mother 21 stone anyway yeah it is it is it is permissible but if uh, but staying in Mina is also wajib mm -hmm. staying in campsite some of us will face some bad condition yeah, with the weather with coughing or flu yeah, because meeting million of people from around the world yeah, they yeah. might be bring some <laughs> virus or something so some of them prefer to stay in the hotel in azizia or in mecca not in mina for that case they are going to miss two things staying in mina and uh, the throwing, throwing jamarat <laughs> their throwing jamarat will uh, it's uh, can be replaced by someone else but their mabit in mina cannot be replaced that means they have to pay dump dump for every single day that they miss if they miss two days that's why they just choose two days 11 and 12 that means they have to slaughter two lab to ship yeah inshallah will make it easy yeah and it's a lot of uh, so what happens uh, the 10 years 11 year kids uh, are they fine to doing this thing uh, because 40 minutes walk, 40 minutes walk, you said in the Yes, uh, as far as I know, <laughs> it is easy. Yes, because, yeah, it's like when you, if you go to short path and then you walk around short path, it's, it takes like two hours and nothing happened. But then no million people. Yes, so uh, that's why we have to stick with our group. Yeah. It's safer. If it, some of us, oh, or some of, this is what happened. Some of people, they used to do Hajj before, so they think they are... They know everything. They know everything, so yeah. they don't want to be the group because... Ah. And then they put themselves in the danger. Yeah, especially because no one uh, no one knows what happened in the future. Yeah. So maybe he feel headache and then... Uh, and then 
Yeah, you need the, his group. There is where's the group? <laughs> where you come from? Yeah. Australia, but he looks like some Indonesian people. Like <laughs> no people believe that. You know, from Australia, you are Indonesian. They bring him to Indonesian yeah, camp. camp. So yeah, so many drama. <laughs> so anyway, stick with your group. Yeah, it's it's safer for you. It's a good to yeah. me. It's it's safer for you, especially when you have your family with you yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. So once you finish <laughs> from the throwing at the day twelve, if you choose to leave from the day twelve, you leave Mina before Maghrib. If you want to come back to your tent to complete the day 13, that's better. Day 13, same, you come back night of 12, uh, uh, night of 13, yeah, you pray Maghrib and Isha in your camp until Subuh, wait until Zawal, Zuhur time, come back, throw the Jamarat, and then once you finish, you go to, you leave Mina and go to Makkah. And more, and all travel agents, they already have the uh, apartment or hotel in Azizia or in, in, in Makkah. So you leave your Mina and then go to Makkah or Azizia because Azizia is not part of the Mina. What you do? You complete your Hajj. Finish. Alhamdulillah. Only one thing left. So you stay in Azizia or you stay in Makkah. Azizia is, is a suburb next to Makkah, like Tondi, Langford. So between Mina and Makkah is Azizia. Azizia is because some of us might be staying in Azizia because the hotel price is cheaper than Makkah. Because Makkah, Masjid Haram is they, they very expensive. Yeah, only people from Gulf country is able to stay in the hotel from the day eight until day fifteen. That week, the price of hotel hotel might be gonna be multiplied by four times, five times. So that's why we are going side. Yeah, they stay there. Gulf people. Yeah. Emirates, yeah, Qatar. That is true. Yeah, those people, yeah, they stay in there. Anyway, that's not our concern. Uh, we we finish our Hajj. <laughs> that is your decision. When you are leaving Makkah, oh, my, my my flight will be the day of 16. So you will be in Makkah 13, 14, 15, until 16. 16, you will go to Jeddah and then go back to our country, to Australia, to wherever we are. These three days, what you do? It's up to you. You want, you have opportunity in front of you. you stay in Masjid al-Haram. You can go visit Masjid al-Haram, pray five times in there. Oh, I want to buy some things for my family. Yeah, feel free to go. Yeah, there is a lot of. You, 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 when you finish your salah, one thing, what the first thing that you will see is shopping center in front of you. So if you want to buy some things for your family, buy some uh, present. Yeah, when you come back from Saudi Arabia to your country, just do it. Yeah, there is. Uh, no problem with that, but make sure that you fill your time and yeah, use this opportunity to make more salawat, more prayers, more dua, more tikir yeah, inside Masjid al Haram. Once you decide to leave Makkah, <coughs> go to Jeddah, one last thing that you have to do is tawaf wada, tawaf farewell. Yeah. Tawaf farewell, that means after tawaf, there is no more activity you do in Makkah except. Take your luggage and go. You can't do type of water and then, oh, I want to come back to hotel and then take a nap first. And then that's why you have to make sure you have to uh, like uh, cooperate with your travel agent. What time is our depart from Makkah to Jeddah, to the airport? Oh, we were leaving. We are leaving from Makkah. The bus will come at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. That means you can do the tawaf wada. Let's say after you pray, Zuhur. In Masjid Haram or after lunch, maybe close to two o'clock, you do tawaf. You finish in one hour, yeah. Tawaf wada, maybe one and a half hour. Once you finish, you go outside, take your luggage, or you want to buy something to for it. That's permissible, but not more activity like you come back to hotel, you take nap, you take shower. That means you still intend to stay. Our intention after tawaf wada is farewell. That means that's that's it. You go and leave Makkah. You leave Makkah, go to, to Jeddah, go to the airport, and then come back to your country. That's how you finish your Hajj, Alhamdulillah. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, uh, what I explained here, maybe still some confusion between us, especially with people who never uh, be in Saudi Arabia before, but at least you have some, you catch some imagination that the journey of Hajj is just following the the orders of activity 
ya yeah, from the day 8 9 10 11 12 or 13 and then you do to farewell and then you leave Mecca that means you complete your Hajj and after that what we have to do is we have to uh, do uh, keep perform the steadfastness ya yeah, istiqamah that the sign uh, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your Hajj is your condition after you finish your Hajj is better than what you were before Hajj and, and these things only you know about yourself I can't judge anyone and we can't judge the others you know yourself is my condition before Hajj and after Hajj is better after Hajj or even worse after Hajj if it's better after Hajj inshallah it's the good news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah will accept your Hajj. But if your condition is the same or even worse after Hajj, yeah? before Hajj, you pray only Jum'ah. After Hajj, you pray only Eid. Even worse. Yeah? Not better. <laughs> even worse. That's, yeah, we are afraid that our Hajj is useless, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept because the sign of Hajj, yeah? because Hajj will remove all your sin. When your when your sin is removed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that means what left in your in your in yourself is the good things, and good things will bring you to ibadah. When after Hajj you still doing maksiyah even more than what you were doing before Hajj, that means your sin still inside your self, and sin will bring you to do another maksi maksiyah. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to. Forgive all our mistakes and <coughs> and for all brothers who ever uh, performing Hajj this year, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect you and uh, give uh, or make your journey of Hajj easy and grant you with the Hajj Mabrur Inshallah. So this is from me. Uh, I, I don't think there is no uh, there is more explanation about Hajj and uh, Inshallah, yeah. Uh, Please make dua for us, yeah, when you in Masjid Al-Haram. So, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. I close this majlis, subhanakallah, bihamdika. Ashadu ala ilanta, astaghfiruka, wa atu ibliq. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.